ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It is Monday, July 11th. Let's get your week started off right, or at least the end of your first day of your week. How's everyone doing? We are going to open up the phone line for you this hour at 877-420-TALK. 877-420-8255. Our text line is open as well. That is 304-396-TALK. 304-396-8255. You want to be a part of today's program, of course. You can find me on Twitter as well, at Paul Swan. So now you know how to be a part of the show. How was your weekend? Kind of anticlimactic. We really didn't have much going on this weekend. Not much at all. I mean, baseball, of course. Baseball is going to be pretty much the thing we are talking about the most. If you know we want to get into that. Other than that, really, you know, we had the NHL draft. I'm not going to really even get into that because I'm not even the fan of the NHL draft. It's just, it's, it's getting better. It just, I'm not a fan. It doesn't have the pizzazz. Everyone comes up there on stage the first day, and they have to thank everybody. And I, I appreciate that. You know, I like to be thanked too. But yeah, you know, 32 teams usually coming up thanking everybody, and you know, you got to go on this long diatribe about how great this player is, and you hand it off to someone else sometimes to make the pick. I just like the commissioner coming up and just making the pick. That's just me. So I watched a little bit of it. Watched first night, watched a little bit of the second. Second day went a little faster, but yeah, and that was really heading into the weekend. So, you know, not much weekend wise happening, of course. We are all counting down the days until we can start once again talking about how the herd do on Saturday. So I know we're all looking forward to that here real soon. So here in a few weeks, we have got it going on here in a few weeks. We've got actually football to get into and to talk about. And of course, there's still a lot going on with the herd right now. Uh, there's a couple of things that we, you know, we touched on last week. You know, they extended the deadline for the fan committee. I think they were looking for like 20 to 25. Uh, I looked at the survey. I went online. I thought, okay, I'm not actually going to fill this out, but I looked at it a little bit just to kind of get a feel for what Marshall is really looking for as far as this fan committee is concerned. And I guess you don't have to be a season ticket holder, but they did want to know a lot of that information. And so you look at the application and students are encouraged to as well. And um, it, it was a pretty good survey. Here's one. I really like this one. Um, and I hope you filled it out with outside local media. How do you receive information about Marshall athletics? Uh, there's emails from Marshall athletics, herdzone.com, Marshall athletics or team specific social media platforms, printed publications, Outside local media, radio, television, Sunbelt updates. So how do you receive your information? Now, obviously, if you're listening to the show right now, I'm in the mix. Radio's in the mix. But are you reading? Are you reading? Are you getting, you're getting your herd information from Marshall? Or are you getting your herd information from outside of Marshall? Because I like how it was worded, outside local media. So that's radio and television. I guess printed publications could mean anything, magazines, newspaper. I guess like you could throw in the, the local newspaper as well and printed publications. But they're kind of curious. I, I think it's a, it's twofold. One, they're looking for some fans to, to be a part of this. And other than that, it, it looks like a nice little general survey as far as kind of get a feel for the people who would actually respond to this, where they rank. And again, um, there's some interesting questions here. They were already asking for some input and feedback. If you haven't taken the survey, you know, what would you hope to accomplish as a member of the Marshall Fan Committee? Uh, what makes you a top candidate for the Marshall Fan Committee? Based on your personal knowledge of Marshall Athletics, what are some of the opportunities to enhance the fan experience? Uh, what areas need the most improvement? So I hope you took this thing and you signed up. If you didn't, I think you still can. It's... Uh, I, I don't think they would turn it down. 
So you got some time. It's over on HerdZone.com. You want to fill this thing out. Just uh, see if you've got a shot at maybe having your ver- your voice heard a little bit better. Yeah, what would you? What are some of the areas that need improvement most? What are some of the fan experience? What needs improved? You know, you know me. The first thing I'm saying is take down the erector set in the end zone. And I'm not worried about that now. That's eventually going to be transformed into something. I'm not worried about that. So because I think you need to I think you need to adjust the seating capacity just a bit and have a better experience. Instead of having you know some some spread out spaces here without fans, I think if you have a little bit more of an intimate feel to it with the fans, you can feed off the energy. Uh, I I don't think the the DJ brought energy for me. Now I'm not saying that's uh, something that's I'm against. I'm not saying that. Yeah, you know, I'm not get off my lawn guy today. I'm just saying I don't know if the DJ brought excitement to me but a lot of people and i again this is all anecdotal none of it is a true representation of the bigger picture here but you know when i hear from people a lot of people don't like the advertisements being played the commercials okay now i get that understand but but you got to pay for some things here so those are things you got to pay for things and I don't know. Some of you could could take it or leave it as far as the the fan interaction with you know the promotions. You know when you have promotions going on during stoppages of play. You know honestly, I don't know how you make that better because you know, do we just want the band just playing after every stoppage of play? It might be cool just to have the band, but at the same time, you know you got to have these advertising opportunities you have these promotions hey let's welcome back now to to marshall you have those opportunities sponsor hits i mean what do you what do you want to call that you know do you want to see a different way to incorporate that into the football experience is that something you would suggest you know what else would you want to see to improve the fan experience uh would it be better select okay concessions we talked about that well, better selection down the line more options, better selection, more points of, of sale, better distribution of points of sale. Does that improve it? Of course, nine million for restroom improvements. Yeah, we're good. I don't need to mention that. So what would enhance the fan experience for you? Yeah, as someone who goes to a football game, a Marshall football game, what would you like to see? I mean, do you want to see you want to see bigger names perform? Before the game, you want to see like a, a more of a festival atmosphere. You have some bigger bands show up. Do you want to see more of that, less of that? You want to see it integrated more? I mean, because we had Thunder Street. Did you like Thunder Street? What could be done to make Thunder Street more inviting for you? You know, what would you like to see there? I mean, these are some of the questions that, you know, you could answer or you can throw them here to me. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, people do listen. So if you suggest something here, I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to get some follow through, but people do hear. There are uh, there are ways to be uh a fan and give feedback and not be on this fan committee, but th- I thought this was a good idea. Great opportunity to do this. So yeah, I'm kind of curious what you think. I I want to hear some of your ideas. What would improve Fan experience at Marshall University. Because tailgating outside of university property, you really can't control that. So it's not like people are tailgating in some picturesque, out-of-the-way uh, out location where you got to get on campus to go to the game, and you got to tailgate all over campus. And, you know, it's just... You know, you've got, you know, you know the atmosphere I'm talking about. And hopefully we see some transformation in the area a little bit more. But, you know, we're we're parking on lots all across the stadium and people are tailgating. So I, I don't know if that necessarily is one of the things that Marshall can address or fix. Like, hey, how can you improve game day experience? But 
I think we're talking about a lot of things maybe inside the stadium as well. Because when you tailgate, you control that to a degree. You park, you bring your, your, your setup, and there you go. Yeah, for me, I think if you can make the experience pleasant, comfortable, do you, you look at maybe chair backs for every seat? I mean, that would reduce capacity. But do you, re, you reseat the stadium? You maybe you lose some capacity, maybe a little bit, but you increase the value of your seat and you increase the comfort of your seat. Do you do that? How do you go about that? And of course, I always like you know more options because. And here's the thing, though. You, you got the pass out, so it's not as if you're stuck. Right now, I don't know how that's going to look in the future, but the pass out, you you can go to the stadium, get your pass, go out, hit your Hit your tailgate, come back. Not everybody can do that. So do you want to see better selection, more options as far as the concessions? I mean, are these even things that matter to you? You know, do you want to see – that beats me. That's what I'm, I'm asking you. What do you want to see? So we got that. We can get into it with you. I just, I'm just kind of curious. What What do you want? What do you want to see to make the, the, the experience better? Do you like the DJ? You want more DJ? You want more DJ? I mean, if it's done, it's done well. I've seen it done at some NFL stadiums. The last time I was at Cincinnati, I thought the DJ was really good. For the Bengals, I thought the DJ was good. And it's a different vibe, though. It's a pro stadium, though, right? It's pro. You, know, you don't have necessarily the college band there. So in college, do you want more of the pageantry of the band? You want the band playing more? I mean, it's, it's what college is about, the band. The football game is the same but different as far as the pro and college game is concerned, but the band. I, mean, cause I don't want to see marching bands in NFL stadiums. I don't. Not my thing. I, there's a drum corps. They have a drum corps in Cincinnati for the Bengals. And it's cool, but I don't I don't really get into it. I'm not I'm not into it as much because it's just a different atmosphere for me. It's a different vibe. Whereas, you know, you want to hear the fight song, you want to hear the band get into it. If the band's good, you wanna, you know, you gotta have some some standards that they play and you can sing along with get the fans interacting together. And, of course, you know, I want to get the students in the band in the same zip code. I want to get the fans that really are loud behind the other team, get the students somewhere where they all can be, make it fun for them. These are things I'm interested in. All right, we'll get your phone calls in. 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. The text line, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. More on this edition of The Drive coming up, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Do you like the show and you want to make your own? Well, let me tell you about Anchor. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer And now you can even add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless for what you can create. Now, Anchor is going to distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast. No minimum listenership needed. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Monday, July 11th edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Tomorrow's going to be fun. Uh, For several reasons, I might be your host tomorrow. I might not be your host tomorrow. So that's, that's mystery grab bag number one, folks. Mystery grab bag number one. Will Paul be here tomorrow? And it's a one-day thing, so don't worry. I'll be okay. Maybe. But it's a one-day thing. 
number two. Conference schedules are going to be coming out tomorrow, 2 p.m. Sunbelt, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Tomorrow, Sunbelt conference schedules will be released. That's for the men. The women's conference schedules will be released on Wednesday. So we've got a couple of days to break down the schedule. That'd be a great opportunity to to look at how the league is going to set this up. I'm interested to see, you know, because with Conference USA for a little while, if the men were playing at home, the women were on the road. So we had a game every conference schedule, either at home or on the road. Now, I don't know if it's going to mirror like that. I'm not understanding um, 100% yet where they're going with some of this because I don't have all the details, but from what I do know, it might not be a, a mirror. So if Marshall is at Appalachian State, Appalachian State's not going to be in Huntington. It's not going to be one of those. Interesting to see how this breaks down. You know, what's the travel going to look like? Will you know? Will it be a little bit more travel friendly? Will and I would think it would be. I would think it definitely would be, as far as the travel is concerned. So we're going to see what this looks like tomorrow. Or we'll break it all down. I'm excited. I'm excited because. If anything, I think this is a good opportunity for basketball. Football, it's a great opportunity for football. Obviously, we know that this is going to be a tough league for the Thundering Herd. And as Coach Huff has said, Sunbelt football is real. We're going to find out real soon how real it is. But for basketball, there's been some question. Okay, how good is this basketball league? So is this... The right time for Marshall basketball on the men's side. I think the women are going to be really competitive as well. But on the men's side, is this a good opportunity to get going in a new league and start reestablishing Marshall basketball? I'm not saying the path is is easier. I'm just saying it's a, it's a new situation. I think Marshall can have a more of – I think basketball, I think it's going to help Marshall basketball a lot more than I think it helps Marshall football. I think Marshall football is pushing itself to be better. And so on that side, I think Marshall is trying to step up to the competition. And not to say that Marshall is below the competition of the Sun Belt. I'm saying Marshall's stepping up, rising to meet the challenge. For basketball, you're trying to improve the league overall. And I think Marshall can have some hand in that. You get Marshall basketball thriving again and being really good in the Sun Belt. And I think you can see, I think, some opportunities happen for Marshall basketball and for the Sun Belt. You don't want this to be a one-bid league. And I really believe this league is on its way to trying to rectify that. And, of course, if we have super conferences, it all won't matter because this thing will be completely wrecked. But with that said, I think you're going to see some more opportunity. And for the women's side as well, I think Marshall – Women, the program favors Marshall a little bit more. The league, it favors Marshall a little bit more. I think Marshall on the women's side will be competitive. Not to say that it hasn't been in the past on the Conference USA schedule, but I think this schedule and its travel and its situation, I think it's going to be a better situation for Marshall than Conference USA. Plus, honestly, what's the worst trip? What's the worst trip in this league? Is Texas State? Is that the worst trip? Honestly, how bad is Appy? How bad is Arkansas State? Really, how bad is that trip? Is that? How bad is Coastal? Come on, how? Georgia Southern, Georgia State. How bad are those trips? Not bad. James Madison, Louisiana, Louisiana Monroe. Not terrible, right? Old Dominion, we not terrible. South Alabama, Southern Miss. I mean, Texas State is probably is is that the most difficult one? I don't even know. Troy, not really that difficult in, in the grand scheme of things. Of course, travel is going to be an issue for the league. I'm trying to figure out how this works, and I think we're going to see a glimpse of that tomorrow. It probably not going to be the uh, the way things are done here in the future, or maybe it is. I don't know. We've got to see what this looks like the first time around to kind of solidify it. And I think we're going to see a, a more sane schedule. 
I think the schedule will be a little bit more seen. Is it going to be Thursday, Saturday? We're going to see, you know, Wednesday, Friday. What are we going to see here? I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how this breaks down. How will the league break it down schedule-wise? And what's the television options going to look like as well? So, again, we're going to see the conference schedule tomorrow. It'll be on social. So you'll see it before we get to the show tomorrow, and then we'll break it down for you. And, again, that's the mystery grab bag. Is it going to be me tomorrow, or is it not going to be me tomorrow? We're going to find out. We're going to see how I feel at the end of the day tomorrow. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, don't worry. It's all good. Uh, I'll be fine. Uh, no, don't want to alarm anyone, but I just want to prepare you for the fact it might be me. It might not be me. And if that's the case, I'll be back on Wednesday, I promise you. All right, we're going to get our break in, come back. We might have something coming up here real soon. Uh, I'm getting some direction on something, so uh, we're going to find out here on the other side of the break here on ESPN 94.1 AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. All right, I've, I was holding out here. I was told, hey, I got something coming up. I have friends over at the athletic department. I have friends to, to alert me sometimes when I'm on the air. There's something coming down. So I, I was waiting for that. Uh, by the way, welcome back. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in. It is a Monday. We will get your phone calls in. You can do that, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Our text line this hour is 304-396-TALK, 304 396 8255, as you know, some days it is a stream of consciousness. Look, it's a Monday, and it feels like a Monday right now. I'm not going to apologize for that. But what I will tell you is that Marshall's adding to the staff. I'm trying to break this one down as we speak, so I just got the news. Uh, Marshall has hired a special assistant to the director of athletics. So um, the good news is they're building the staff. They're, they're building the staff. And we're getting some young perspectives in this staff. So her name is Arlen Vieria. Arlen Vieria. So she is now the special assistant to the director of athletics. Uh, so she has a background at Pitt. She was part of the dance team at at Pitt. Uh, she's going to be involved in special projects with a focus on the student athlete experience, and she'll also serve as uh, Mr. Spears' executive assistant. So she's someone that has spent several years learning how roles and operations and responsibilities all connected and worked. So she's someone who's been in and out of different departments of the athletic department. And so she's also got experience in business administration, finance and marketing, and sports management. So that gives you an idea of what kind of staff is being built at Marshall University. And she's young. She already has several years of experience within an athletic department at a P5 school. And then she has, I think, a pr probably a, one, of the, one of the things that I'm suspecting here is you're bringing in some people with experience but some fresh perspectives. And I like that. Because I think that's something we need to see more of, especially in the athletic department. We need to see some, some new ideas, fresh perspectives, but experience. You need to see a good mix of youth and experience, a different variety of experiences and points of view. I go back to the fan committee. And so... We're seeing, like, for example, yeah, the new person that is joining to 
it's a rebranded role from sports information director, digital strategy and brand management. That's Rodney Casey. He's a younger man. So you're seeing a lot of younger people coming into the athletic department. And I think that's going to bring a different vibe, a different energy with Thundering Herd and the athletic department. And, of course, the whole thing here is, again, I think the fans are important. Obviously, the fans are important. As a group, fans are important. Fans buy the tickets. Fans come to the games to support the teams. But how many of you are going to, you're going to football, right? Okay. How many of you are going to basketball, right? All right. Keep your hand up. Are you going to women's basketball? Okay, I see some hands going down. Going to, going to softball, hands, okay, seeing some hands going down. Going to soccer, some new, some new, seeing some new hands, saw some hands go down, saw some new hands come up, okay. Volleyball, you're going, seeing some hand, maybe some new hands, okay, There's a lot of hands going down, not going to volleyball, okay. But yet, you've got to make sure that those student athletes have a, uh, an experience that makes them want to be at Marshall, and that's top to bottom. Making sure that you know, they are having the proper student athlete experience, and again, it's not the it's not the athlete part necessarily that's the focus here. It's got to be the student athlete part, the balance, the experience between being a student, being a successful student, and being successful on the athletic field or the athletic field of play, whatever that field of play may be. So, cool. Like I said, I was um, I was kind of trying to figure out I didn't get the news directly. Like, okay, hey, keep your eye out. There's um, there's some news coming out. Okay, cool. I can use it today. It's a Monday. So, there you go. New, uh, new hire. More coming up. Oh, again, it kind of leans into the management style of the athletic director you know surrounding himself with people and I feel like I, and I don't know it's not a okay here's a level of uh, hierarchy here's a, a layer or two you got to get through to get to him I think it's more of okay you know I'm a high energy guy I got to go and do things and I got to have people along with me here so I can get the right things done in the right direction. I, it's, I'm, that's my guess. Uh, by the way, uh, some other things are happening. Um, first of all, we got to talk about Scholar Athletes of the Year. This was out earlier. Conference USA put this out. Madeline Hart of the swimming and diving team and Jackie Schmidt of the women's golf team each won the award for Scholar Athlete of the Year. So every sport has a Scholar Athlete of the Year. So the Thundering Herd getting a couple on the list. Also, as we always talk about, uh, the Herd gets bigger again over the weekend. Amir Foster, he's a three-star defensive back from Miami, making that verbal commitment to the Herd. Soon to be a four-year starter at the high school level. Uh, Has some offers from James Madison, Coastal Carolina, FAU. So anytime you can get an athlete you want and pluck that person away from the other schools in your league, namely Coastal Carolina, James Madison, you're doing all right. Foster is a class of 2023 member. He's a defensive back. So the herd closing the gap, getting bigger over the weekend. Uh, and I saw this over the weekend as well. I Good for him. Michael Byers put it out on Twitter. Signed a contract to play professional basketball in Denmark. 111 games played. Started in 34. In 29 games this past season. Averaged 7.6 points. 3.6 rebounds and 1.4 assists. His overall average. 6.3 points. 2.8 rebounds. And .9 assists per game. And he could dunk. 
He did have a dunk. So that's good on him going to Denmark. I think that'll be good for him. Playing professional basketball overseas is a good option. Of course, yeah, the, I think the competition is better. He's going to see better competition because not everybody gets into the NBA, so where do they go? And you're seeing some of those teams overseas. I think the competition is a lot better than you might think it could be. Um, we're going to see some really high competition with the TBT coming up here in the next few days as well. And some of these guys are playing overseas because there are only so many spots in the NBA. Not everybody can – you basically – you have to be a high pick. If you're not a high pick to begin with, you got to work your way onto a team. And there's only so many spots. So the fact that Michael Byers can get a, a spot on a professional basketball team in Denmark, I mean, he gets to play basketball. That's cool. Is he going to be in the NBA? Probably not. Does he want to play in the NBA? Oh, sure. I'm sure he's got a dream. But at the same time, get to play professional basketball on the on the stage in Denmark. Now we got to find out more about Denmark basketball. Look, I, I didn't even watch the Big Three. Was that that was what? Yeah, the Big Three basketball over the weekend. I didn't even watch any of that. If I'm going to watch one-off tournament basketball, it's going to be the TBT. Yeah, I never got into the Big Three. Or, yeah, just. I think because, you know, you had the TBT and that coming around. You know, I I don't know if it was right around the same time, but I just never got into – I had a hard time getting into the USFL. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, it's football, great, but I don't have any any allegiance to those teams. I tried to get into the XFL the first time, and I thought, okay, that's cool because I get it again. You know, Vince McMahon – yeah, this was pre hush money, Vince McMahon. This was pre. Um, I'm going to have you sign an uh, NDA to cover up our improprieties deal. That that Vince McMahon. And then the go at it again with the XFL, and I'm like, okay, this this is not bad. I'll I'll get into this here. I'll give it a shot. And then you had the uh, what was it? The American Alliance. The Alliance of American Football, that thing died on the vine quickly. And now you got the USFL, which is playing all its games in one location because you want to try to get it established before you actually put the franchises in cities. Cut, keep the cost down. I get that completely. But I tried. It wasn't really for me. And then you got the XFL coming back again with The Rock. And it's the rock, so I'll give that a shot. But at the end of the day, if I don't have a connection to this, I'm just not interested. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's different. It's different. It's like you got college football. I'm yeah okay. I like college football. Up and coming, really good talent. And then you have pro. All right, you have NFL. I'm good. Okay. Well, what about the minor leagues of, of See, I'm not into the minor leagues. Of, you know, even though this is like alternate leagues, I'm not into Canadian football as much as I probably should be. I'm not into this USFL. I'm not going to be probably into the XFL. I've tried twice now. Not into that. Same thing here with, um, yeah, you know, with basketball. I'll get into the TBT because John Elmore's in it, and Ott Elmore's in it. I'm into it because of that, and. Rondell Watson's in it. I'm into it because of that. Ryan Taylor is in it. I, that's that's the reason why I'm into it. Stevie Browning is there. I, it's, again, that's that's why I'm into it. And, and James Kelly. Don't forget James Kelly. Can't. And I, I'll root for Justin Johnson. I don't want to, but I'll root for Justin Johnson. We're trying to get odd on, by the way. I don't know if, when we're going to get him on, but we're going to try to get Ott on the show because we have to have Ott on before this thing goes. So we're going to try to get Ott on the show. All right, we got to hit our break. We'll come back. I'll get your phone calls and texts in. We'll do that today at 877-420-TALK, 
And the text line is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. More on this edition of The Drive coming up on ESPN 94.1 at AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Monday, July 11th edition of The Drive at ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in. We are going to get your phone calls in, of course, at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. The toll-free number is, again, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. The text line, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. we got Pirates baseball coming up tonight right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. The Pirates 12-game road trip heading into Miami. Three-game series, 640 is first pitch we'll have it for you here again on espn 94.1 am 930 so um what is going on the pirates beat the brewers what is going on 8-6 series finale pirates getting the win and winning the series two games to one what is going on here uh there was actually four home runs in this game and the pirates win a series so they're still middle of the pack. Still middle of the pack in the division. That's okay. Got plenty of time. All-star break's coming up. And, of course, uh, that's going to be on July 19th in L.A. Taking on all comers, the National League will. Uh, that's another thing. I, see, that's one thing. I'll watch the all-star game, but I, I it's not what it once was. Because the, the whole thing about the all-star game for me was... I thought baseball had it best. NBA, okay. Right now, NBA players don't want to get hurt. So, okay. That's why the skills competition is not as fun anymore. I mean, you think today we'd see Michael Jordan. Okay, uh, Jordan aside. You think today we would see a Jordan going at it, the dunk contest, or Dominique Wilkins? No, we wouldn't see that. We wouldn't see that. So, the all-star game baseball, I thought, set it up right. American League versus the National League. Well, that's great because we don't the American League players don't see the National League players and vice versa. We don't see those con and now we kind of see them. It's not as prevalent, but we we kind of see them. At at the same time, the whole if the American League wins, host the World Series. If the American League loses, the National League no. Do I really want the National League's uh, hopes and dreams on the backs of the all-star representative from the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cincinnati Reds? Do I really want that? David Bednar, by the way, uh, selected to his first ever all-star game. So, do I want the hopes and dreams of the whatever the... If I'm a National League fan, I always root for the National League. I, I don't... I don't know why, but... I just I root for the National League. There's no logic in that whatsoever because if my team's not in it, why am I picking a side? It's like the Super Bowl. It's like, okay, I'm going to pick the AFC side. No matter what, I'm going to pick the AFC side. Oh, wait, the Pirates. The Steelers. The Penguins. I'm picking the, that side. Oh, okay, no, let me. Pirates are okay, but. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All-Star Games coming up. Uh, do people even – by the way, again, I'm doing a great job promoting the baseball we've got coming up tonight here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. But yeah, do people today, do they get into it? Oh, and, oh by the way, before I forget, i got to get into this. Heinz Field. Heinz Field. I need to touch on this. Okay, I was cool with Heinz Field. You know, Heinz Field makes sense. There's a connection there. There's a there's a connection between the product and the city. The fans like the product. I mean, who doesn't use Heinz ketchup? 
I mean, I don't use Heinz mustard, but I use Heinz ketchup is what, yeah. You got to use French's mustard. French's. You got to use French's. But Heinz for ketchup, you got to get Heinz ketchup. Now, the deal, the deal is over. So it's no longer Heinz Field. It is, are you ready for this? A Krischer Stadium. A Krischer Stadium. A Krischer Stadium. What is a Krischer? Why, why is it? Why is why is it's it's an insurance broker? So they, okay, that's fine. It, you could, I mean, you can have all kinds of brokers. I mean, you got MetLife Stadium, right? Okay, it's fine. You could have that, but. How many Pittsburgh fans are actually going to be excited to go to? I mean, they're not going to call it this. They'll probably call it Heinz Field still, but a Krischer Stadium. It was, it was Heinz Field. I mean, you got, you got some stadiums that only have naming rights, like Paul Brown Stadium. And here you go. Here's the deal now it's a Krischer Stadium. Doesn't have the same ring, does it? Fans like their stadium names to have that. That some do, some don't. It's like when we all go to football. Hey, we're going to the Joan. What if, what if that disappeared one day and you get a naming right there, a new naming right for for the football stadium? You still calling it the Joan? Maybe. So a Krischer Stadium for uh, this is. It's a Michigan-based insurance brokerage, by the way. They did pick up a um, a tech company that's based in Pittsburgh, Tolco, and they do have one connection. Um, Thomas Toll, minority owner of the Steelers, became chairman of the Krischer Technology Group. So they're they're they. Doesn't have the same ring, does it? Doesn't have the same connection. And I mean, we're talking about a stadium named after a catch-up, Heinz. They need to think these things through. I mean, you could have, you got to get the right sponsor. Like, you could have Mr. B's Potato Chip Stadium, and then the Steelers could come out in those terrible, awful Bumblebee jerseys, those terrible, terrible st- Terrible, terrible jerseys. Look like bumblebees. So you get to have Mr. B's Potato Chip Stadium. I, I think the fans would have been in on the joke on that. That does it for this edition. We're back tomorrow. We'll find out. Will it be your, yours truly? Uh, all seriousness, uh, maybe it'll be me, maybe it won't. We'll get you covered no matter what. I uh, hope to see you tomorrow here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. WTC7BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and the Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.